everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I want to tell you about the scary cutthroat nature of the art school I went to. So I went to ACAD in Alberta, Calgary, and even though I had a good time there and I learned a lot, there were a lot of things about it that were really intense and uh, I don't know if they were totally necessary. But first I have to give you some background about the way that the school worked. Now in pretty much every college, you're going to be sorted into different majors, but in a lot of different colleges, you'll still blend a lot with the other kids in different majors. There's a lot of overlap. But in ACAD, that only really happened in the first year, and that's because technically you weren't even sorted into your major in first year. They expected you to try out everything and then finally decide what you wanted to go for in your second year. You would also have to apply for certain programs because some programs would not let you in just for getting into the school. They wanted an even higher standard of work ethic and things like that. So it was really high pressure. Um, so there were three main categories of major that you could apply for and it seemed like everyone in the same major had a similar like broad personality type. It almost made it feel like Hogwarts houses. So the first one was the fine arts kids. Now the fine arts kids are pretty much whatever you'd expect if you picture an art student. This is the closest to what the like pop culture idea of an art student would be. They tend to do political art, a lot of self-expression, and they're just generally the artsiest, I guess is one way to put it. Um, they did a lot of painting, and usually painting classes were under the fine arts label, unless they were specifically uh, labeled to be for concept art or something like that. They would also do a lot of stuff that was largely incomprehensible to the other kids, and there was a lot of uh, anxiety about whether or not your art was unique enough when you were in these classes. The second group was the design kids. Now that included everyone from people who wanted to make logos for companies to people who wanted to make character designs for cartoons and video games, things like that. This is where I wanted to end up. And it was also one of the few programs that you did actually have to reapply in second year. It was super scary and everyone was always saying how hard it was to get in. Design courses were known for being the most difficult and the most time consuming, especially because unlike most of the other courses in the school, the process that you showed um, before your final product was just as, if not more important to your grade than the actual final product. In every other course, whatever your process was, was fine. But in design, it was really important that you show every level of how you got to your idea and that you showed that you did enough sketches before you started the final product. Otherwise, you would get marked down even if the final product was good. The last group was the craft kids, and basically all they ever wanted to do was make good objects. They wanted to make art, of course, but most of the th art that they made was things that you could actually use, like clothing or ceramics, like mugs and stuff. They even blew glass. Their classes were deceptively difficult and uh, dangerous, especially glass blowing and things like that, but the kids themselves seemed to be pretty chill. They just wanted to make good things. Unlike the craft kids, there was no chill in the fine arts or the design department. There was, in fact, a blood feud between these two departments, and not just between the students. The teachers even got involved. Now, I had heard that there was some animosity between these two groups, and I didn't think much of it. I kind of thought that that was the kind of thing that was sort of childish and had no real purpose. So when I went to my first painting class, it was actually the first class I had gone to in ACAD at all, um, like it was my Monday class on the first week. When the teacher asked me what major I planned on going to, I didn't even think about it and I just was like, yeah, I'm going to go into design because I was really excited about it and I didn't think there were going to be any problems with saying that, but uh, she was a fine arts teacher and this was a fine arts class and so when I told her that, she was pretty um, not happy. She spent the rest of that whole course trying to convince me not to go into design because she thought basically that the design kids were like art prostitutes, like because they sold out their art to uh, other people to, you know, make cartoons or something like that. Obviously, you're working for someone else. She really thought that, like, that wasn't real art. And this was a sentiment that I heard from a lot of the fine arts kids. Basically, the idea was that if you try to make art for money or for anyone but yourself, you're not a real artist and you're totally selling out and it's like a bad, immoral way to use your work. To be fair though, that teacher also used the word representative as if it was a negative thing because she thought that only abstract art had real emotion in it and that anytime you made paintings that looked like anything, you were kind of falling short. So I really wasn't going to get along with that teacher no matter what happened, I guess. 
The feud continued on, even though they did try to make us collaborate once. They actually assigned every design student a fine arts student, and we were supposed to make something together. But it actually backfired in a major way, because most of our fine arts partners didn't show up when they were supposed to, and they also conveniently tended to get better grades on the exact same project than we did because we were graded by separate teachers. So it was, in fact, just a really infuriating show of why we didn't like each other in the first place and made everything worse. Now the fact that half of the school was fighting with the other half wasn't the only cutthroat thing about this school either. There was also a weird sense of like this class system that pervaded the entire school where depending on your major and depending on your year you got treated differently. So for example when you're in first year you're basically the lowest of the low because Almost all art schools have an extremely aggressive dropout rate for first years. Um, either people can't handle the workload or they just decide that art school's not for them, but uh, for whatever reason, first years drop out a lot. Like, your classes get thinned out in a major way. Anywhere from a third to a half of your class may be gone by your second year. So when you're in first year, you're basically like... Uh, dead men walking like they have no idea if you're even gonna stick around so the teachers treat you differently and you also get different uh, materials and things like that so noticeably in your first year classes you get some really uncomfortable workspaces to work on you get these like paint splattered splintery drawing tables that are just agonizing to work on even if you weren't sitting in a metal stool that just it like your whole your legs go completely numb like you feel every bone in your your whole body like rejecting the chair it's like it's made out of metal and it's slightly too tall for my feet to touch so maybe if you were taller it'd be okay but like my feet are just like dangling there and it just it like my toes would go numb every single time and when you're sitting somewhere for like six hours sitting on something metal with your feet suspended in the air it just really hurts so i was shocked when i got into the design department and I came into class and I saw like padded computer chairs that you could like swirl around in like you were in some sort of fancy office. I felt like, I felt like royalty. And um, there were also like beautiful desks that had, ne had never had any paint on it. There wasn't like tape sticked all over it. It was just beautiful. There were power supplies everywhere so you could charge your laptop. Also, it sounds weird, but there were windows in there. And because of the way the school was built, it was actually constructed by someone who had only ever made prisons before. That sounds like a joke, but that's actually true. Um, so there were very few windows in the school and in the design department there were always windows so you actually got to see the sun which was really good because our classes were so long that it was usually going down by the time that we were let out. So every college has a late policy and then every class within it usually has its own late policy that the teacher kind of makes up but in the design department the late policy was standardized and it was this. No matter what happens, on crit day, if you are more than 30 minutes late to turning in your assignment, you get a complete fail. Like, you get absolutely no credit for that project. And especially when projects take usually like weeks and weeks to make, and there's only a few in the whole class, if this happens to you once, you're probably going to fail the entire class. Like, it's hard enough to even get decent grades when you get it turned in, but if you're fighting an F, on your transcript while you only have a few projects in the whole class, passing the class is basically impossible. So um, obviously no one wanted to turn in an assignment late. Um, you, you obviously couldn't turn it in a whole day late, but even turning it in a couple minutes late is really scary. Like every 10 minutes or something, you get docked usually like 10% or something like that. It's very, very intense. Um, so one day we had a girl who was usually very on time and she was a very good student. So when she didn't show up on crit day, everyone was really worried. Um, she came in a couple minutes late with her, her project on her USB drive and she was sort of like walking weird and um, the teacher was like hey like what what's up like what happened and she's like oh you know like uh, I poured I poured a whole pot of boiling water on my foot so um, it took me a little bit longer to get here and the teacher was just like go to the doctor <laughs> because like legitimately like we're talking like third degree burns you know pour pouring boiling water on yourself is serious um, but she like stumbled her way into class to give her assignment in as on time as she could. Um, and if that's not like the sign of cutthroat school policies, I don't know what else is. What's the craziest or harshest thing your school has ever regulated or had going on? I'm curious to see what the rest of you are dealing with. 
Also, thank you guys so much for the 400,000 subscribers. I still can't even believe that that's how big this channel has grown. I'm gonna just keep making content for you guys. I love doing it, and I can't wait to see where this channel goes. Thank you guys so much. Thank you to all of my patrons, new and old, including Scott Peterson, Christy Stewart, Paynamel, The Artsy Moose, Elizabeth Alwyn, Count Pompon, Okamore, Matthew Kunke, Blep, Sergeant Pendulum, Shiori, Lena Christine, Sweet Twelve, Ikiwas, Taka, Isabella Spooky, Lachlan MD, Mystic, Enzo Jobert, Your Boy ST, JJJ, Leblebleble, and Addy Visual.